You can make changes to a workspace, customize a workspace, then save that workspace, and when you want to come back to After Effects, you can go back to that workspace. That comes in really handy when you're working someplace where you've got multiple people working on the same machine, and each person wants to have their own workspace. So when you go back and open up After Effects, you can then switch over to your workspace. So let me show you how to make a customized workspace. Go to Working Files, double-click on It, open up the After Effects Projects folder, and double-click on 0204 Customize. This is the same project we used when we did the tour of the workspace. So again, as I did then, I want to make sure we're on the same page. So I want you to go up to the workspace drop-down list here and make sure it says standard. If it doesn't change the standard, and if it is standard, then go down here and say reset standard like that. And say, yep, we want to go to standard. Here we are. The first thing you can do when you're working in workspaces like this is to change the size of the panels, or at least change the size of the frame. If I go over here and put my cursor between two panels side by side like this, I get this set of parallel lines with a couple of arrows. That tells me I can pull them left and right. So I pull one one way, the other one compensates by getting smaller or larger depending on which direction I'm pulling it. Same thing is true if I go between two panels down here, I can lift them up or down. And if I go to a junction where there are multiple panels, I get this little four-pointed arrow there. I can drag them all around at once. They all work in concert like this. If I want to view a panel in full screen, like the composition panel here, I just hover my cursor over it. I don't click on it. I just make sure my cursor is over this panel, the one that I want to expand. Press the accent or the tilde key. That's the key in the upper left-hand corner of your keyboard. Just press that, and you go to full screen like this. If I want to go back, I just press that key again. There we go. If I want to move a panel from one frame, let's say from here, and put this panel over here, it's fairly simple to do that. Every panel has a gripper. You see the gripper in the left-hand corner there, those little dots, like two parallel lines of dots? Every panel is a gripper that allows you to move it around, grab a hold of it, and drag it. Now, in fact, the entire tab is the equivalent of the gripper, but that little guy indicates that you can grip this thing. So I'm going to drag this thing around, and as I drag it out, notice that we get these little rectangles and trapezoids where we go around, these purple rectangles and trapezoids. This indicates where it'll go if you let go of the mouse button. If I let it go here, it'll create its own frame and sit there by itself between the project panel and the composition viewer, the composition panel. If I go here, it'll reside inside the frame with the project panel, so it'll be two panels there, a panel group. To the left here, it'll be to the left of that project panel, now it'll be below it, that kind of stuff. If I go right to the edge, it turns green, that means it's going to go right along the entire left edge. I'll let go to show you that. So now we have this panel here taking up the entire left edge. It only has this much stuff in it, so it's kind of a waste of real estate, right? So I'll go back and grab the gripper again. And again, it doesn't have to be right there on the dots. It could be anywhere in the tab here. I grab the tab and pull it around. I want to put it in with the project panel, so I'll just let it go here. And Now it's included in the project panel. You can go over here and see you have two guys now. So we'll call this a frame and a panel group. I'm going to add a couple more panels to this group and fill it up. So I'm going to go get the audio panel over here and drag it over. Put it inside there. There's three of them now. Get the preview panel, put that inside there as well. Now I'm going to compress this down a bit just to cut down on the real estate for a real purpose here. As I do this, you notice you can't see all the tabs anymore. So if you want to navigate amongst the tabs, you just need to move the scroll bar to find all the tabs that are there. So if I want to go back to the project panel, I can click on that again. I'm going to expand the view a little bit. Now that I've made all these changes, it's getting kind of messy. So I'll revert back to the standard workspace. I'm going to show you a different way to do that. Instead of going to this drop-down list, I want to go to the Window menu. Inside there, there's this other menu for Workspace, and you can see it looks exactly the same as this guy over here. The same drop-down list here, you'll see over here on the Window menu, Workspace. I want to reset standard again. Say, so, yep, there we go. Sometimes instead of moving a panel from one frame to another, you might want to float the panel. I want to float a layer panel while I look at the composition panel. So I'm going to go over here to the Masks Comp and double-click on Tennis Background to open it up inside a Layer Panel. So you've got the Layer Viewer, Layer Panel, and the Composition Viewer, the Composition Panel over here. I want to see both of them at the same time. So I'm going to make a Floating Panel. I'm going to take the gripper here and pull it out. And notice, by the way, if I click over here, I can't use this as a gripper. You can usually use the Tab as a gripper, but here the Tab is no longer a Tab. It's a drop-down list. So I'm going to go grab the gripper here and pull it out. As I pull it out, I get those same rectangles and trapezoids as before, but now I'm going to hold down the Control or the Command key. Control in Windows, Command in Mac, and now it's going to float as I move it around. 
And I'm going to let go of the mouse button now. And then now I can let go of the control of the command key. And now it's a floating panel, and I can adjust its size independently of the rest of the panels here. So if I want to look at the composition panel and the layer panel at the same time, I can. Sometimes it's good to do this because you might be working inside the layer panel, but you really can't see your results as well in the layer panel as you can over in the composition panel where you're looking at the results relative to all the things in the composition. Here you see it only related to that one layer. So sometimes you want to float your panel like this. But most times when you do want to see both at once, you take this thing and instead of making it floating, you just put it next to it over here and you see them side by side. If I want to delete a panel, I just click on the X in the upper right hand corner. So I'm going to go over here and drag this to the right and click on the little X and that takes that panel out of the scene. It goes away there completely. We can always bring it back again, of course, but now it's gone from the workspace. The tools panel is kind of an exception to the rule. Here's the tools panel. There is no little X there. There is a gripper bar right here though. If I touch it, just click on it, it immediately makes it a floating panel. And as you move it around, now it looks like it doesn't want to be a floating panel anymore. It wants to actually settle down someplace. So it floats for a while, but as long as I grab the gripper, it wants to go back inside some other group or back by itself up here. So I'll drag it up to the top again, put it there again. When I click on it again, it wants, now it's the floating panel. If I grab up here, it stays a floating panel. If I grab the gripper, then it turns into this panel that wants to reside with other panels. Let me take it back up to the top. There we go. So let's add a panel. I want to add the Effect Controls panel. So I go Window, Effect Controls panel. Now, where is that? It's not in this alphabetical list because it's a viewer. So here's the viewer down there, Effect Controls. Click on that. That adds the Effect Controls panel. And by default, it puts it up here with the Project panel, which is actually a good place to put it. Let me slide this to the left so you can see both the Project panel and the Effect Controls panel. So this is the way I normally work. I like to have both of these guys present up here in the upper left-hand corner. So now that I've made these changes, I want to save this as a customized workspace. The way to do that is go to this drop down list here or go to the window menu to this little drop down list over here. In any event, I'm going to go to this one because it's more accessible. Click the drop down list and then it says New Workspace. Click on that. I'm going to type in Jeff's Workspace. Like so. And now we have a customized workspace called Jeff's Workspace. I'm going to switch over to something else and come back to it. So we'll go to Paint like that. You see the composition over here and the layer panel here. That's because you paint on the layer panel and watch your work on the composition panel. Now let's switch back to mine. Click this and go to Jeff's workspace. There we go. We're back and see that we have the effect controls panel and the project panel all together in the left hand corner, which is what we want. Let's say I want to change this now. I'm going to, let's say, take the info panel here and put it inside here with the preview like that. So now we have those two guys together. We've got preview and info there. Now I want to save this as my updated version. So I go over here to the drop down list again, say new workspace. It doesn't say update your workspace, it just says new workspace. So I'm going to type in just workspace again and click OK. And it's going to say, hey, this one already exists. You sure you want to overwrite it? Yep, I do. OK, now it's overwritten. Again, we can switch between the two and see what happens if we do the two here and go back to this one again. There we go, we got those two guys inside that frame, which is what we wanted. Now let's say I want to delete my workspace. Well, I can't delete the open workspace. Right now, my workspace is currently open. So if I go to delete workspace, my workspace will not be in this drop down list. So I need to get out of this workspace if I want to delete it. So I'm going to go back to the standard workspace like so. And I want to delete my workspace. So go down here, click on delete workspace. And now my workspace will be in this drop down list. I select it and say OK. And now that workspace is gone. It's no longer in this drop down list. So that's how you can change the workspace, save it as a customized workspace, and then update it or, if you want to, delete it.